Hey everybody, hope you're having an, a great afternoon. I wanted to give you the very latest on Edalia. Thankfully continues to weaken as it moves through the state of Georgia. We're going to talk a little bit about what happened this morning. We're going to talk a little bit about what's happening now and of course what we expect to happen this afternoon and evening. So stay tuned with us. We're going to dive deep into Edalia, what it's doing and what it will do and what it means for the forecast this evening uh, here in North Georgia, but across coastal Georgia and coastal South Carolina as well. I want to give you the very latest update on where Edalia is right now. Still a hurricane. It is a category one hurricane with 80 mile an hour winds. Keep in mind 74 and stronger. That is a category one hurricane. Once it gets below 74, it is a tropical storm. So we're only talking about a weak hurricane, a weak category one. And I do expect this to be a tropical storm as it approaches the coast. We do get the brand new update from the National Hurricane Center here at two o'clock. So far, the cone does show it as a category one hurricane as it approaches the coast of Georgia and the Carolinas. But because it's already weakened to 80 miles an hour, I would not be surprised if with this next update, it will be a tropical storm as it approaches, which is good news. The other piece of good news, it is still moving rather quickly here at 20 miles an hour. It is moving to the north northeast. You can see where the center of the storm is right now. The eye of the storm. It's about 45 miles northeast of Valdosta, Georgia, and just south of the city of Douglas in South Georgia. Also, something I want to remind you is that the hurricane force winds extend about 20 miles from the center of the storm. So the worst of it is pretty tightly packed within the center of the storm. Once you start heading a little further away, so places like Albany, Valdosta, St. Simons, things there improving, not seeing the uh, the magnitude and uh, the the worst of it as that is going to stay confined to that center eye wall. So again, Edalia is a category one hurricane. It is about 45 miles northeast of Valdosta and it is moving quickly to the north northeast at 20 miles an hour. The track will continue to take it to the northeast here. Again, this track from the National Hurricane Center still has it as a one with 75 mile an hour winds at 8 p.m. tonight. But I do think that that next advisory will have this as a tropical storm. Either way, we're talking about a strong tropical storm or a weak category one hurricane. Either way, we are going to see trees down. Either way, we're going to see damage, some beach erosion, high surf, some problems on the beaches, power outages. So even though it may be a tropical storm, we're still going to see some damage in coastal Georgia. In fact, where you see those reds there, that is where we have a hurricane warning for possible hurricane conditions. And then we've got hurricane watches and tropical storm warnings through the rest of the coast. This will continue to weaken, eventually moving offshore as we head through this evening or tomorrow morning by 8 a.m. It's already moving off the coast of the Carolinas. They're near Cape Hatteras and then it will continue to move out into the Atlantic. Yesterday, if you were following us, some of the models had it doing a loop de loo in the Atlantic and almost coming back. Uh, models are starting to steer away from that, so that's good news. Bermuda will be on alert, though, as we watch where this goes over the next six to seven days and certainly something we will continue to watch because we've seen it time and time again. These systems, once they move out in the Atlantic, it doesn't mean they're gone for good. They could very easily uh, come back depending on what systems are pushing them one way or the other. So we will keep an eye on it here on the first alert team, but just wanted to let you know as far as impacts down the line, things are improving when it comes to that. Here's a look at first alert radar. You can see the eye of the storm very clearly defined there in South Georgia. Those green boxes you see, those are flash flood warnings. So we are seeing some flash flooding and some flooding across parts of South Georgia, and it is impacting a a rather large portion of South Georgia. In fact, I want to zoom on in where the heaviest rain is right now near Douglas and Nicholas, near Alma, Baxley. That is where we have some heavy rain, and that is where we have some flooding. And when you look at the radar on top of it, you can see that that's where the heaviest rain is still falling. So not only have they already seen very heavy rain, but they will continue to see very heavy rain. Again, this system is moving fairly fast at 20 miles an hour, so at least it's a quick mover. We do know these tropical systems produce a tremendous amount of rain, so the last thing you want is it sitting over the same area for an extended period of time. That's when you really get major problems, but thankfully the storm system is moving, so it will continue to do so. I want to show you what's going on on the coast. Although we're not seeing very much rain in Savannah, Hilton Head, towards Charleston, that red 
outline, that is a tornado watch. So severe weather possible, even though they're not seeing much in the way of rain right now, they're seeing some bands here and there. Some tornadoes will be possible. And we always know it's that front right side. We call it the dirty side of a hurricane. That's where you have the heaviest rain. That's where you typically have the strongest winds. That's where you typically have the highest threat of severe weather as well. So we're still watching for the tornado threat across coastal Georgia, coastal Carolina as well as that system continues to move to the northeast here at home. North Georgia looking so much better. Uh, I will say that the models did a phenomenal job with forecasting this storm. We told you yesterday, the day before that on its current path, the impacts would be minimal here in North Georgia. And as you can see, that is the case. Uh, areas northwest of I-85 not getting anything for the most part. Even southeast of I-85, we're only seeing sprinkles uh, through parts of Rockdale County, Clark County, Oconee, Green and Oglethorpe, even Jasper and Putnam starting to see some rain. But as you look east of our viewing area into middle Georgia, notice we're starting to see some yellows and reds. So the rain is starting to pick up as the system moves north, and I do expect that to continue. So although